have a respect for our government and to submit to the broad faith of human society and the dedication of our time, talent, and treasure to advance the kingdom of God on earth. We believe in a local and universal church established by our Lord as a unique and special fellowship for all who believe. It's a spiritual community ordained for worship, stewardship, and service to God and people, which every believer must become a part. But the body of Christ in the world today displaying the same lack of power and spiritual gifts experienced by the early church. We believe in the return of Jesus Christ, that the words of prayer and our lips will come the sound of the trumpet, and both those who have died in Christ and those who are living in Christ will rise to be him and raise to be with him forever. We believe in the judgment of all people, when the wicked shall receive their punishment and the righteous shall receive their reward. We believe in the ultimate triumph of righteousness in our life and the last Amen. Thank you. 
Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known, made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's have a lot of praise and worship part of our service. We ask you to stand with this as we sing.
there are probably many more things I can say about her, but of course all you know that I, every Wednesday, amen, we, we, we going on so that we can listen um, to Pastor Williams in the morning. I make sure I share it with the church. So it's like everybody, 6 a.m. Wednesday, it was called We Can't Do Anything on Wednesdays at 6 a.m. Because if you do, I will not be there because I'm going to be over <laughs> listening to Pastor Williams. And I actually remember you, Minister, I think that you actually spoke as well on, I think, one of the afternoon or evenings yep. that you did. I was on there, and I was really blessed by that as well. So, so I, I was paying attention. I was paying attention. <laughs> And so um, after we sing this last song, the next voice will be that of Pastor Williams. We ask as she comes up here that you would stand and make sure you're listening because I promise you that there's going to be a word for you. There's going to be much that you can take back with you and not just for right now, but to continue on the rest of your life. Amen. Amen.
Church mother, Mother Janice Austin, God bless you, Mother. Amen. Hallelujah. She 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 sit back there and don't look like she paying attention, but she watching everything. Amen. <laughs> I love her, and she is such a watchdog in the spirit. And I thank God. I thank God for each and every one of you, Sister. That Sister Angelica. Amen. God bless you. Had an honor to have her on with us at Bible study this past week. I am just honored to be here. I honor the presence of God. I honor these Levites over here, these musicians. My God. The worship that is in this house is powerful. And I'm just grateful once again, amen, to be in your presence. Uh, to be able to worship and fellowship with you. As, as Lady Black has already said, my name is Pastor Stacy E. Williams, and I do bring you greetings from the Garden of Prayer Church, where I have had the awesome uh, privilege to serve as pastor for the last 14 and a half years. And I, 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 I tell my pastor, I wouldn't give nothing for my journey now. It wasn't easy, but I wouldn't give nothing for my journey now. But somebody say, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord, and I'm going to stay consistent to the theme that has already been presented with today, and we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4. See, what you don't know, Lady Blackman, is that to Philippians 4 and 6 is our theme scripture at the Garden of Prayer. Amen. <laughs> It's, it's, it's our, th am I telling the truth? It's our theme. So when I saw it, I got excited. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, but I promise I won't be before you long, but I will give you what I believe the Lord has, what the Lord has released in this hour. Amen. So we're going to go quickly to Philippians 4. Amen. And we're going to read uh, verses 4 through 6 as it is stated in our time. Of, of theme scripture. If you're there, say amen. amen. The word of the Lord reads, rejoice in the Lord always. Somebody say always. always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful. Somebody say be careful. Watch it. Watch it. Be careful for nothing. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Father, we say thank you. God, we lift you up and we magnify your holy name. God, we understand, Father God, that there is no one that compares to you. There is no one like you nowhere. You sit high and you look low. No one can even be mentioned with your name. Your name alone is great. Your name alone is mighty. Your name alone is powerful. And so, Father, we thank you that at the mention of your name, demons tremble. At the mention of your name, atmospheres are shifted. At the mention of your name, strongholds are loosened. Chains are broken. And God, yokes are, are broken even as steel. And God, we lift you up and we magnify your holy name. Now, God, as those who have pressed their way into the household of faith on this morning, God, I pray that you would open up their eyes, open up their hearts, open up their spirits so they can receive what thus saith you. God, we believe that every step has been ordered on today. We believe, Father God, that there is a word, a life-changing, a life-shifting word that has been released from heaven on today. Father, we believe that we are in the right place at the right time. And God, we're thankful that we're under an open heaven. So pour out your blessing. Pour out your healing. Pour out your deliverance. Pour out your word in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. And God right now will say thank you. Right now will lift your name and tell you how wonderful you have been right now. We'll clap our hands and declare victory. Right now we'll thank you for everything that is about to take place. God, we place no treasure on things that we see, but we will trust in the name of higher than heaven. that it's in God that I live, move, and have 
might be. And somebody say, right where I stand. I don't always get it right. I say a lot of things that are off, and I don't always make the right decision. But right where I stand, I am a testimony of God's favor and his mercies that are renewed every morning. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, right where I stand. where I stand this text where we are here in Philippians it is it is a letter one of the things that I enjoy about reading uh, these these letters by Paul because Paul is is it, 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 as, they, as the young people say it, it don't get no real amen. amen when you consider the journey of Paul and I'm going to rush for the time we understand that Paul, at the time, was going by the name Saul. He was a persecutor of the church. We understand that as being a persecutor of the church, not only did he go against the things and the people that declared the name of Jesus, but he made it an issue to not only just go after them, but go after their families. He would even go in bills that he would put in jail. He would read the letters and know who they were sending letters to and go and torment wherever the letters were sent. And that's the type of man that Saul was. Saul was a man that lived in dual citizenship. He was Roman as well as, as, as Jew. And we find that while he was doing these things, he would pick a side depending on where it benefited him. Amen. We find that while he was on the road to Damascus, we find that Jesus took issue with what he did. And he said, Saul, why not persecute us? Well, why not persecute us, me? And the Bible lets us know that he had an encounter with Jesus and he went and he was blinded for a couple of days and he had to go and, and God had to speak to him and God had to change him and God delivered him. Somebody say he's a deliverer. Because of that, he became one of the prolific preachers of the New Testament, of this apostolic movement that we find that occurred at the time where, where, where Pentecost has already taken place and the commencement and the birthing of the church began to come forth. Paul began to preach. Jesus. Somebody say he preached Jesus. He, he preached Jesus. And in the midst of preaching Jesus, Pastor, he made people angry. He made people angry because they were confused. They said, is this not the same man that at the mention of Jesus, he would torment, he would throw people in jail, he would attack and he would come against them. But now the same man who is now going by Paul, he is preaching and declaring that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Can I just somebody say pause right there. When you begin to commit to God and when you give everything over to him, trust me, things going to change. Can you look at your neighbor and say, God will make me change. God has caused me to shift. God has caused me to become new. And we find that while we we study the books of the Bible, especially during the time of Paul's But during the second one, we found that he's writing a letter and he finds himself in the jail in Philippi. That's right, that's right. And while he's in this jail cell, he's having a moment of reflection. And in this time of reflection, he's beginning to tell the people, listen, don't feel sorry for me. I know it looks real bad and I know it's easy to sit there and try to figure out what happened and what went wrong but I've come to realize and I'm rushing a little bit he said whatever state I'm in I'm going to be content look at your neighbor say I'm going to be alright right where I stand I'm going to be alright he began to live a testimony in life in the midst of a hard place and began to tell them like, listen it was worth it all because where the name of Jesus outranks how people feel about me. The name, the fact that I'm able to preach and teach and call on the name of Jesus, it weighs more than public opinion. It weighs more than my shortcoming. And I'm certain, somebody say, I'm certain that while I'm faithful to 
said rejoice in the Lord always. And again, somebody say again. I say rejoice. You know, there's times in our lives where it's not, we, we, it's not categorized as being joyous. Am I talking to anybody in this place? There's times in our lives where we are going through things that doesn't seem like there's anything to live for. Am I talking to anybody in this place? There are situations in our lives that we will come against that will make us feel like we have to control. Our faith has been compromised and humanity begins to peak and grow. But Paul is saying that even through those moments, there is still a remnant, there is still a place where we can begin to call on the name of Jesus. Now he said, right where I am, I'm in a bad place. I'm in a cell. I'm in bondage. I'm in a prison. And some of you may say, well, I've never been in jail. I've never been in a restricted place. But sometimes the enemy will try to keep us trapped in the yesterdays of our actions. Sometimes we'll get to places. Have you ever found yourself going in a direction and you meet somebody that you met back Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> 
supplication, with thanksgiving, with supplication. In other words, there is a place, somebody say, that goes deep. That there's a place that goes beyond what you see on the surface. That there's a cry, that there's a position that I take in the spirit where I begin to kneel at the altar and I begin to moan and groan and I begin to tell the Lord just what, where it hurts and what's going on. I begin to supplicate in the spirit because when you begin to supplicate it, somebody say that's when you know it got good. That's when you know it got personal because when you begin to supplicate it goes beyond the you're asking for. Uh, somebody says she's teaching right now. Uh, it goes beyond even the petition that you're lifting up. Uh, when you begin to supplicate, uh, it's like it unto the difference between praise and worship. Uh, praise is when you praise God for what he's done. Uh, but worship is when you worship him for who he is. Uh, and when you begin to supplicate, uh, it tells that it says God. Uh, you know what I stand in need of. Uh, but in this position of supplication, it's not about bringing my need unto you, but it's about affirming your power through the need. It's about accepting your will through the need. It's about saying, not my will, but thy will be done. It's about understanding that through this, you're working something out in me. Through this, you're delivering me from my own self. Through this you're teaching me to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lead not to my own understanding, but in all my ways I'm going to acknowledge him so that you can direct my path. So I say when you supplicate in the spirit, you wedge between the porch and the altar. that's in you. 
you understand that it comes with a cost. Don't you know that the anointing is never easy? Salvation is free. But somebody say the anointing is going to cost. And when you know the hand of the Lord is upon you, and when you know God has anointed you for such a time as this, yes, you're going to go through jail experiences. Yes, you're going to go through valley experiences. But the thing that we also understand is that we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus said, I sit on the right hand of the Father and I make intercession for you. There's never a time where God, Jesus, is not standing calling your name. Isn't it wonderful to understand and wonderful to think that your name is being called in heaven right now? That Jesus is saying, I'm praying for you. Even the things that you don't even know that need to be prayed for. He said, I'm standing for you. My brothers and sisters, through all that we've gone through, especially over these last few years, if we don't recognize anything, we better recognize that now is the time to get right with God. Am I talking to anybody? We cannot afford to allow ourselves to be found in court with our work undone. Paul said, I did some things in my past that I'm not proud of. I did a lot of stuff that people still try to hold against me. They try to keep me trapped in the yesterday years of my life. He said, but I found a savior who is forgiven. I've repented. He's forgiven me. He's filled me with his precious Holy Spirit. And he's allowed me to be a proclaimer of the gospel that Jesus saves. And whenever you make up in your mind, to do the will of the Lord, the enemy is going to get angry. Somebody say, he already mad. Y'all not talking to me. He already mad. He already mad. And one of the things we have to realize is that as we continue to move forward, never allow your current situation to be the excuse for you not pressing forward. Somebody say, right where I stand, I'm not perfect. Right where I stand, everybody's standing. Right where I stand, heads are bowed. I still have some things that I need God to do. Right where I stand, I, I'm still kind of iffy because I don't even want to go home. Because when I go home, I got to deal with the things that I try to avoid. Right where I stand, I'm dealing with some things that I have not even forgiven myself of. And the enemy has played havoc over my mind and sent me on guilt trips. Right where I stand, I still, I stand in need for a touch from God. I got reports, I got things that I haven't even been able to tell anybody. Right where I stand, I struggle. With brokenness, I struggle. With bitterness, I struggle. With forgiveness, I struggle. With different habits right where I stand. But I'm so grateful that even where I am, the hand of the Lord has reached for me. And so, Father God, we say thank you now. Are there any grateful people that said, where I stand, the Lord is reaching for me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Lift those hands. And know that the Spirit of the Lord is reaching. He's reaching, he's reaching. He's reaching, he's reaching. Beyond the hurt, he's reaching. 
Beyond the pain, he's reaching. Beyond the guilt, he's reaching. Beyond the brokenness, he's reaching. Beyond the embarrassment, he's reaching. And he's saying, I still love you. I still called you. And my hand is yet good upon you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right, yes, Lord. Right way. Right where you stand. God says, I'm already working out your next move, your next season. Right where you stand. I've already heard the things that weigh heavy on your heart and the desires that you have carved out to me that you haven't even told anyone else. He said, right where you stand. I love you and I'm here. And I'm calling your name. Right where you stand. God said, I've made it personal for you to know that I'm a healer. My God, I'm a deliverer. I'm a sanctifier. I'm a restorer. Have your way, God. Right to where you stand. You don't have to worry and you don't have to figure out another thing. He said, you just trust me. I'm elevating you in the spirit. I'm increasing your faith. Right where you stand. And so while you're standing, lift those hands. I want you to lift those hands. While you're lifting those hands, I want you to begin to cry out the name of the Lord. Come on, begin to call on Jesus. While you're calling on him, you know what you stand in need of. Begin to tell the Lord, Lord, this is what I need you to do. God, this is who I know that you are. This is what I know that you are.